Hello and welcome to Wild Country Adventures. In this video, I'll be building the bed frame with drawer storage for my truck bed. It also has storage in the front and back by the wheel well and storage under the camp stove. So now, let's build something. I'm going to start by taking a 2 by 10 by 8 and cutting it down to 6 feet. Then I'm going to trim one inch off because I want this bed frame to lay level with the wheel well. Alright, and I am going to hold on to this piece. I might use this a little later on in the build and if not, it'll make good firewood. So like before, we're going to take another 2 by 10 and we're going to go ahead and cut it down to six feet. Then we're going to go ahead and trim another inch off, just like we did on the last board. All right, next I'm going to cut another two by 10 at 27 inches, and then I'm going to trim another inch off the top, and this will be the back. Okay, so I just took a half inch sheet of plywood and I cut it down to six inches. This is going to be the top of the bed frame. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cut it to 40 inches wide. Okay, so we have the top cut, which is 40 inches wide by six feet long. Now I'm going to go ahead and notch out the two corners that go up against the bed liner to help everything mount flush. Okay, with the two corners notched out, I'm now going to notch an edge out in the center and one more notch at the end. This should help everything mount flush. Right, so next, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple access hatches that will go on the front and back of the wheel well, just so I can access this extra storage. I am also going to try to cut this out where I can use these as the lids that go over top. So then I'll put a brace underneath on the sides and then this will act as a lid to access the storage next to the wheel well. All right, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and cut the other side. All right, so now we got the two lids, our two access points. So like I said, I'll make the braces to go underneath that'll hold the lid in place. And I'll also just drill a hole in here that I can use as a handle to pop this up. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and cut the slats that'll hold the lids in place. All right, so now I'm gonna cut the bottom of the frame, which is gonna be 27 inches wide by six feet long. I'm gonna cut two of these pieces. One is just a thin sheet of plywood. The other is gonna be an underlayment that'll help the drawer slide in and out. So we got one piece of the bottom cut, and now we're going to go ahead and cut the second layer using what we just cut as a template. Alright, and now we're going to go ahead and stain both of these. Now this is my first time staining, so this is not instructional at all. If you're looking for some instructional videos on staining, I'm sure you can find dozens of them on YouTube. Now, I do know when you are staining, you want to make sure you're going with the grain. 
just want to make sure I'm getting a nice even coat across everything. Alright, so now that we got them stained, I'm going to go ahead and let them dry and then I'll come back, flip them over, stain the other side. So now that the stain is drying, I'm going to go ahead and sandwich together the two pieces that will be the bottom of the frame, just using liquid nails to help seal everything and keep it tight. Alright, with the liquid nails down on the one piece, we're going to go ahead and lay the other one right on top. It's also important to make sure you're lining everything up before this dries. And with everything lined up, we're just going to put some pressure on it. Okay, so now we're going to give this some time to set and the stain some time to dry. Once that's done, we'll come back and continue the build. Next, I'm going to drill the holes in these two that will be the lids to access the storage in front of and behind the wheel well. Alright, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and sand them down, take care of the edges, just to make sure I don't get any splinters pulling them on and off to access the storage. I'm then going to file down the center of the hole that I drilled earlier. Once again, just to get rid of any rough spots that might cause splintering. I'm then going to go ahead and sand down the braces that are going to hold the lids in place. Alright, with that done, we are now going to go ahead and sand down the openings in the top. Alright, we're now going to flip this over and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and mount the plates that are going to keep the lids from pushing all the way through. This will make sure everything is held in place. And then I'm just going to use machine screws with the number 10 washer to hold everything down. I think I'm going to end up skipping this middle bracket and hopefully the three will help hold it in place well enough. There's not going to be a lot of weight on this section of the bed. so. We'll see how well it works with just the three. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes on the other side. All right, now that we got those holes drilled, I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes that will attach the 2 by 10s to the top of the frame. Now I did mark these. You can see the brown lines that go around. I marked these where the 2 by 10s will rest so I know where to drill. Alright, with the holes drilled, I'm now ready to attach the plates and then I'm going to flip this over and stain the inside of the holes. Alright, so I got these set up over on the other side and all I'm doing is screwing these through the holes I drilled earlier. Now, I did drill these holes a little bit smaller just to make sure that I get a good tight fit. So, I do have to screw these through the holes. A little extra work, but to make sure everything stays solid, it's well worth it. Alright, so this is the lid that will be on the back portion of the bed frame. Fits pretty good, holds pretty solid. The lid for the front. Once again, fits pretty good, fits pretty solid, it is flush, 
the little lines here I'm not too worried about. This will all be carpeted. Obviously the carpet will be cut out from here, then put on the top with this part cut out just so you have a way to pull it off. So, all right, now with that done, we're gonna go ahead and stain just this inside portion. All right, now with the insides done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on and stain the inside of the lids. As you can see, I got top marked for the top, so I know which one's gonna be the top. This is gonna have the carpet on it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and let these dry, then I'll come back and we're ready to add the carpet to the top and the base onto the frame. Okay, now I'm ready to start laying the carpet on the top but I want to make sure that I leave enough overhang on this side where I can fold this under and mount the 2x10 to this. So at this point I'm just checking to make sure everything is level and even so I get the lines going straight. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start stapling everything together. Now, the one thing I want to do while I'm stapling this and as I'm going down is I want to make sure that I'm getting the screws in these holes now while I can lift the carpet up and kind of see where everything is at. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not going through the board as I do this. And then, as I get the screws added, I'm going to go ahead and add some staples as I go down the line. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and staple around the opening so I can cut those out. All right, now that I got the carpet stapled to the top, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. I'll have to trim it again a little later, but right now I'm just gonna trim off some of this excess to make this easier to work with. Okay, I'm then gonna go ahead and cut out the two access points. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of trimming around the curvature as I go, just to help it form fit a little bit more. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and staple the carpet just over the top of the other two by 10. This is the one that's gonna go on the inside. And I'm only putting the carpet on here just to make sure everything's level. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead on the outer two by 10, and I'm gonna screw down the front and back and then get the measurements to make sure that it's spaced correctly so it'll sit just over the wheel well. So now the measurements that I'm looking for are going to be 27 and a half, right about there, and then I'm going to check the back side and make sure that's at 27 and a half. Alright, now that I know both ends are at 27 and a half, I'm going to go ahead and screw in the two end ones here. Alright, now we're at 27 and a half on the front, 27 and a half on the back. Next, I'm going to go ahead and screw down the rest of these for the center supports, and then I'll have to put the back piece in. Okay, now we got the main supports in for the outside of the frame and then on the inside of the frame. So now we got to do the one on the back. All right, so I got the back two screwed in for the back. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and screw the top in. And then we'll just have to put the bottom on it. But before we put the bottom on it, I'm going to go ahead and make the drawer just to make sure everything lines up. And now I'm going to go ahead and staple the carpet on the lid for this piece, making sure that I go on the side that wasn't varnished versus the side that was. I'm also going to double check just to make sure I've got the lines lined up right. Alright, now that the carpet's stapled on, I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole for the handle. Then I'm just going to put a couple staples in just to make sure the carpet holds around the handle. There we go. So like I said, wheel wells here. This is just extra storage. I didn't want to waste the space, so this way I got a nice solid bed frame still, and when I need to access what's down in here, I can just pull that off. All right, now let's do the other side. All right, before we start building the drawer, I'm gonna go ahead just double check my measurements on the front and back, which should both be at 27 and a half inches. Which they are, and that means that I'll be building the drawer 27 inches wide. 70 and a half, so 27 inches wide by 70 inches long. All right, then I just transfer the measurements to the sheet of plywood, cut out what I need for the bottom. So now we're just going to cut a piece of underlayment and I use the piece I just cut as a template to draw my lines. Then we're going to sandwich these two together just like we did last time. And then I'm just going to take the plywood and I'm going to apply some liquid nails before I put the other piece over the top. Next, I'm gonna cut two one by sixes at 70 inches. I'm now gonna take some leftover two by 10 and I'm gonna cut two pieces down to 26 and a half inches. I'm then gonna trim it down where it's only seven and a half inches tall. And this will be the front and back of the drawer. I wanted to use the two by 10 just because I felt it would give me a little extra stability. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drill the pilot holes for the sides of the drawer, and I'm also going to put a couple furring strips in just for an extra reinforcement. So at this point, all I'm doing is putting the sides of the drawer on. I just want to make sure everything is level and flush. I've already got the two screws in the end holding that one by six. Now I'm going to go ahead and put one in each corner of this one and then I'll zip the rest down and put the ends in. The main thing you want to do at this point is make sure everything's flush and you can get the screw in without cracking the board. Alright, so now that we got the sides on, just screwed on in the corners, I'm going to go ahead and screw the rest of it down. Alright, and now that we have the sides on, I'm going to go ahead and put the back on. You can see the back was originally a 1 by 10 that I cut down to about 7 and a half by 26 and a half. And this should slide right in. I wanted the front and the back to be a little bit more durable. Plus, I'm still going to add in the extra supports that I can screw everything to through here. Since I am going into the 2 by 10, I am going to use the 3 inch screw versus the inch and a half that I used along the sides. 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, flip it over, and then I'll measure and cut the two furring strips that I'll use as support pieces. All right, we now got the front on, and what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna drill some holes through here, same thing underneath, and in the back, screw this down to the two by 10, and then I'll add the support on the inside that we just cut. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead, screw these in through the side, and I also have holes drilled going along the edges, three on each, and I'll zip some screws in there. The ones on the end, I'm gonna go ahead and use the three inch screws for, and the side I'll use the three and a half, or sorry, two and a half. Okay, so this next part is gonna be optional. I am gonna go ahead and make a platform for my camp stove to sit on so when I pull the drawer out, I'll have a cooking surface right there. I think I can lift it up just a little bit, so what I'm going to do is cut some slats to raise this up just a hair. Alright, so I got a couple 1x2s that I just had lying around. I'm just going to cut these to size so I can fit them in. This should raise the camp stove up just to where I want it to be. should fit perfect. It's going to be a little close, but let's see. Oh yeah, we got a couple inches of clearance in there for shutting the drawer, so we should be pretty good on that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead, screw this together, make a piece that'll go through here, and figure out a way to secure the stove. Like I said, this part is optional. If you don't have a camp stove you want to put in or you just don't want to mess with it, all you really got to do at this point is put some felt on the bottom of your drawer and then go ahead and make your face plate for your drawer. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this shelf mounted in. Okay, before mounting the shelf, I'm going to go ahead and just run a bead of liquid nails along the inner edges. Now I'm going to once again drill a couple pilot holes in here. Now I'm going to take some inch and quarter screws and go ahead and zip this down. Alright, with that in, this should slide up nice and even. This is where I'm going to put my camp stove. Make a brace for back here, figure out a way to make a handle on this so I can pull this out and at least have access to a little bit of storage down below. So, all right, I guess the next step is gonna to be to cut this back piece. Okay, so it looks like I got a perfect fit. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the lid on real quick just to make sure everything fits. Now I'm gonna drill the hole for the handle. I'll sand it down later, just to make sure I don't get any splinters, slivers, or anything like that. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and wait for the caulk to dry, and then I'm going to stain everything. I'm probably going to carpet the center just so I can add some Velcro to whatever I'm carrying. The Velcro sticks to the carpet and helps keep things from rattling around. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then I'm going to stain it and then I'll be back.
Okay, now that everything's dry, we can go ahead and add on the bottom of the bed frame. Now, it's important to note that you want the underlayment facing on the inside because this will be the bottom. The drawer will be flipped over and the two underlayments will slide on top of each other real nice and make the drawer easy to pull in and out. Okay, now that I got everything lined up, I'm going to drill holes in the four corners like I did with the top, screw those down, and then I'll drill the rest of the pilot holes to mount this in place. Now, I am using three inch screws as I'm going through the two by tens and I want to make sure this is solid. All right, so now that I got the four corners secured, I'm going to go ahead, drill the rest of the pilot holes, get this thing screwed down, then we'll be able to make the front. All right, now that we got the pilot holes drilled, we can go ahead and start screwing her down. All right, with that done, we can now go ahead and make the front to the drawer. So to build the front of the drawer, the first thing I'm going to do is take this half inch thick sheet of plywood and go ahead and line this up and then I'm going to trace around it on the other side, cut it out and then I'll attach it to the drawer. Alright, then we just need to cut out the front of the drawer. Alright, so now that we got the drawer cut, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a piece that's going to cover this area. I'm going to end up putting a couple brackets with some Velcro so this piece will actually be removable so I can access this storage cabinet from the outside or from the inside. Alright, now I'm cutting out a side piece that's going to cover the edge next to the drawer. I'm then going to drill a hole in the center of the removable plate to access that front storage. And once again, that hole will act like a handle and I'll go ahead and sand all this down. All right, so this piece is going to end up going here and like I said, this will be removable to access the storage. And I did cut out this other trim piece that I'm going to go ahead and end up bolting in here. All right, let's go ahead, get everything sanded down, and then stain it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and sand down the front of the drawer and the two trim pieces. Now this I'm just kind of showing as an example of a door you can pull off. I am actually gonna mount a switch and a couple USB ports in here. This will be permanent, whereas this would be removable. Uh, when I get to the point where I'm installing it, I'll kind of show you the difference between the two and how you could do just this versus what I'm doing because what I'm doing just requires uh, uh, electricity. I'm running a battery, but I'm not going to worry about showing all of that. So at this point now, we're going to sand down these three pieces. All right. Got everything sanded. We go ahead, stain these pieces front and back, let them dry, and then we can attach everything and hopefully be done. Okay, now that I'm waiting for the stain to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add some carpet to the back here. And I'm just like with everything else, just stapling it in place. Now I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean the back of this real quick. Just up around the top. I'm not worried about the rest. And we're going to give this time to dry. And then we're going to go ahead and just add a couple pieces of, of just some slide around here. Typical for furniture, anything sliding across hard wood. This is just going to help make it a little easier to slide the drawer in. And it's just got the 3M backing on it. Alright, and then that will help everything slide in and out nice and easy. Okay, so now I have the bracket that I'm going to mount in here like this. No, like this, sorry. This is going to hold a couple USB ports and a switch. Like I said, this is my customization to it. I really didn't include this in the video just because 
it, it's just my personal preference. This is what's going to replace the original cover that I made. It was going to be a door to pull off to access this from outside the truck. Uh, if I was going to mount this, I would still use these L brackets. I would just put Velcro on the insides and then Velcro on the back and then I could just Velcro it on and pull it off whenever I needed to. So for now I'm going to go ahead and mount these. I did not tighten these down yet just because I want to get them mounted into place and then I'll worry about tightening them down. I'm going to go ahead and screw the top in first and then I can adjust the bottom portion. Alright, now that those are in, like I said, I'm going to use some washers to kind of level this out a little bit. So now that that's in, I'm going to tighten the bolts here and this should be set to go and we can go ahead and mount our switch and USB port. So as you can see, I got the two side pieces mounted for the trim. I'm going to leave this part open. Like I said, USB ports and a switch goes in here, and this is just to trim it off. I got it nice and solid. I used L brackets, which seems to work very well. This is very sturdy, so this is solid, not going anywhere. At this point now, I think we can move on to the drawer. Okay, now I'm ready to put the front of the door on for the drawer. The first thing I'm going to do, take a three inch screw, and I'm going right through the front of the drawer into the 2 by 10 that's behind it. And I'm going to kitty corner these. And I'm just doing this to hold the front of the drawer, the door, to the drawer itself. Alright, I put those in the wrong spot. Okay, now that we have that in, like I said, I'm going to have to cut the ends off of these. But first, I'm going to go ahead and mount the handle and then I'm going to put two bolts through here just to make sure it's sturdy and on there, not going to pop off. All right, now let's do the handle. So I'm just going to start these at first. I'm not going to go ahead and zip them all the way in until I have all of them screwed in. All right, with that done, we can go ahead and screw this in the rest of the way. All right, so we got our handle on now, and I'm going to finish drilling these through the 2x10 behind it, and I'll put a couple bolts in, and it should be good to go. Other than the wiring, like I said, that's just my personal customization. I'm not including that in the build, but we get these bolts in, and I think we're about ready to put her in the truck. So. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get the bolts on. Alright, we got one in. And two in. There we go, she is done. So now the last thing that I have to do is to cut off these excess bolts and screws. Then I'll file them down just to make sure I get rid of all the rough edges that I might cut myself on. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this out and we can get it in the truck. All right, now we can go ahead and pop her in the truck. It is definitely heavy. that the camp stove will sit on, and then we got our camp stove. All in all, not bad. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, but it took more time than I thought it would. I do have a chunk that I'm going to cut out for the floor here. I'll then put a trim piece up here and along the cabinet so I can pull the floor out, set it on top, and have a wider bed for when somebody's camping with me. All right, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to make sure you're notified of upcoming videos from Wild Country Adventures.